This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the celiac disease. So basically what is celiac disease? Celiac disease is the gluten sensitive enteropathy. Gluten sensitive enteropathy. Now what is this gluten sensitive enteropathy? This is basically that whenever the patient of the celiac disease, whenever he eats or he digests the food containing the gluten, so what happens that his immune system become activated and it destroys the epithelium of the intestine. So this is the gluten sensitive enteropathy. And what are the foods that contain the gluten? We all know that is wheat, barley, rye and many other foods that contain the gluten. So this is the basic introduction of the celiac disease. Now. Uh, it will be more clear when we will be studying the pathology of this disease, pathophysiology or the pathology of this disease. So what is the pathology? That whenever, basically whenever we in, uh, ingest the gluten containing food, that is the wheat, barley, rye or some other food that contain the gluten. So what happens that the gluten in the small intestine is break down into the two substances. Clear? This is your gluten that is in the small intestine. And in a small intestine, it is broken down, broken down into the water soluble component and a alcohol soluble component. So, what is the water soluble component is basically called as the glutenin, and the alcohol soluble is the gliadin. Basically, we are concerned with the gliadin. This is the main component of our disease because this glutenin it is a water soluble and it is digested at the brush water of the small intestine. But we have the gliadin. Now, what happens? This is the normal pathway. Clear? We are first of all studying the normal pathway. In the normal pathway, gluten enter into the small intestine, divide into the water soluble, alcohol soluble component, and the water soluble component is the glutenin, and the alcohol soluble is the gliadin. Now, for suppose that we have the intestinal epithelium like this. This is your epithelium, and this is your brush border. Suppose this is your brush border of the small intestine clear now at this brush border your glutenin is digested now what happens that this is your gliadin molecule and this crosses the brush border this gliadin molecule crosses the brush border or you can say the epithelium of the small intestine and it enters into the lamina propria now this is whole normal pathway now in the lamina propria, normally in the lamina propria, we have a enzyme that is called as the tissue transglutaminase. This is an enzyme which basically deaminates the gliadin. Clear? This is the enzyme normally present in, our, uh, in the lamina propria and this enzyme basically deaminates the gliadin as the gliadin enters into the lamina propria it is acted upon by the tissue transglutaminase and this tissue transglutaminase i am writing the short form here tissue transglutaminase and it is now called as the now gliadin is called as the deaminated gliadin it is called as the deaminated gliadin now up till now this is the normal pathway now normally what happens in the normal people, the deaminated gliadin is basically digested easily. Clear? This is digested easily. But in the patients of the celiac disease, we have uh, normally in the lamina propria, we also have the antigen presenting cells normally. Clear? But now in the patient of the celiac disease, we have antigen presenting cells, but one more additional factor is present. For suppose this is your antigen presenting cell and there is an extra molecule on the antigen presenting cell. That molecule is called as the LHA DQ2 or LHA DQ8, human leukocyte antigen DQ2 and DQ8. 
सो दीज आर बेसिकली प्रेजेंट ऑन द एंटीजिन प्रेजेंटिंग सेल्स ऑफ द पेशेंट सफरिंग फ्रॉम द सीलियक डिजीज नॉर्मली दे आर नॉट प्रेजेंट इन अवर बॉडी बट इन द पेशेंट ऑफ द सीलियक डिजीज दीज एंटीजिन दे आर प्रेजेंट ऑन द एंटीजिन प्रेजेंटिंग सेल्स नाउ वॉट हैपन दैट वेन एवर इन द पेशेंट ऑफ द सीलियक डिजीज ग्लैड इन इट एंटर्स इन टू द Uh, into this lamina propria so now this gliadin this is supposed as a foreign body by these antigen presenting cells that contain this hla dq2 or dq8 now this is considered as foreign body and now these are activated gliadin combined with these molecules and the antigen presenting cells now what is their function antigen presenting cells they present this whole molecule to the t lymphocytes or you can say that they act now this antigen presenting cell they activates the t lymphocytes when t lymphocytes they are activated they cause the destruction of epithelium clear now this epithelium is basically it starts to destroy these t lymphocytes they act on this epithelium and they start to destroy that epithelium moreover this t lymphocytes they also activate you also know that they activate the b cells and these b cells they produce uh, what antibodies and they produce three types of the antibodies important to remember that antibodies are basically iga iga antibodies against the tissue transglutaminase clear iga antibodies against the endomycium and iga antibodies against the gliadin you can say anti uh, you can say iga antibodies against the tissue transglutaminase against the endomycium and the against the gliadin and they further cause the destruction in this way there will be the destruction of the epithelium of the intestine clear is that clear to you that in the normal normally what happens that gliadin enter tissue transglutaminase act on that it deaminates the gliadin and gliadin is digested finish this is normally but in the in the patient of the celiac disease what happens that we have the antigen presenting cells that are means that contain a special type of the antigen that is called as the hla dq2 or dq8 these antigen presenting cells that are also present on in the normal patients means in the normal people we have the antigen presenting cells but those antigen presenting cells they do not contain hla dq2 or dq8 in the celiac disease patient we have this extra feature that is the hla dq2 or dq8 which is um, means present on the antigen presenting cells and they recognize the gliadin as the foreign body so what happens they act uh, they uh, cause the activation of the t lymphocytes which cause the destruction of the epithelium and they also activate the b cells these b cells their function is to produce the antibodies that are anti ig Uh, against the tissue transglutaminase endomycium and against the gliadin and this further causes the destruction so this is the pathology of this disease now one thing for the diagnostic purpose for the diagnostic purpose we take the biopsy from the second part of duodenum and proximal duodenum why because these part are exposed to the highest concentration of the dietary gluten clear that's why the biopsy is taken from these part and this is very important for the diagnosis is that clear now i am telling you the histopathology of this disease what is the histopathology of this disease histopatho there are four pot important features in the histopathology number 1 you will find out the increased number of the intra epithelial lymphocytes basically there are uh, intra epithelial lymphocytes means these lymphocytes they are present in these intra epithelial lymphocytes they are present here and because they uh, means their function is uh, maybe to transfer the gliadin towards the lamina propria that's why there will be increased number of the intraepithelial lymphocytes then we have the crypt hyperplasia means we also know that the intestines has the 
crypts and there will be crypt hyperplasia this hyperplasia will be interfering in the digestion process in the third and the fourth uh, step of the digestion that is the trans epithelial transport and the terminal digestion phase so in the third and the fourth phase of digestion they are interfered by the due to the crypt hyperplasia then we have the villus atrophy uh, you all know that the uh, they are there are the villi there are the villi means the finger like projection of the small intestine so they are atrophied in this celiac disease condition and then we have the increased plasma cells increased in the mast cells eosinophils so this you will be observing in the histopathology slides there are four features increased number of the intraepithelial lymphocytes crypt hyperplasia villus atrophy and the increased plasma cells mast cells and the other eosinophils and all that clear so this is your histopathology now we have the serology now we have the serology this is the also very important serology why i'm just telling you wait a minute i'm writing it here serology there will be increase in the immunoglobulins in blood and this is very important for the diagnosis why because villus atrophy and the lymphocytogenesis they also occur in the viral enteritis that's why there will be increased number of the igs in the blood and this will be indicating the celiac disease while the villus atrophy and the lymphocytosis occur in the viral enteritis also that's why this is the differentiating feature clear this is your serology and now after the serology we have the clinical features of this disease now the patient how the patient will present patient will present with the chronic diarrhea then we have the bloating chronic fatigue clear then we have the anemia iron deficiency anemia megaloblastic anemia why anemia why occurs because the obviously there will be uh, the de defective absorption so there will be defective absorption of the iron iron will not be absorbed vitamin b12 will not be absorbed and there will be decrease in our body that's why there will be resulting into the anemia iron deficiency anemia which is the hypochromic microcytic anemia and vitamin b12 anemia deficiency anemia that is the megaloblastic anemia so that's why Uh, anemia occur because of the malabsorption then in the very less patients we have the dermatitis there is a you can say itchy skin lesions blistering skin lesions that is the uh, dermatitis high uh, herp herpetiformis dermatitis herpetiformis this is in the 10% of the patient not all of them only 10% of the patient then this is more common in the females because the menstrual bleeding it increases the effect of the means uh, impaired absorption clear that's why there is more common in the females now after the clinical features there are um, uh, two three terminologies that we have to uh, clear them okay i am writing it here after histopathology one terminology is silent celiac disease and the other one is the latent celiac disease silent celiac disease is the one with the positive serology plus villus atrophy but without symptoms as its name indicate silent means without presenting symptoms there will be positive serology as well as the villus atrophy then we have the latent uh, celiac disease in which we have the positive serology and we don't have the villus atrophy no villus atrophy clear this is the latent celiac disease then we have also called as the pediatric celiac disease what happens in the uh, in the child which is born clear up to the 6 months we give the exclusive breastfeeding means only breastfeeding we give after 6 months uh, you can give uh, means certain other substances in, uh, in to the baby like the serolac and all other substances so from 6 to 24 months if the baby is given with a gluten diet so the baby starts to present with the chronic diarrhea bloating 
एंड एनीमिया वेट लॉस मसल वेस्टिंग क्लियर सो एंड फेलियर टू थ्राइव सो दीज ऑल सिम्टम्स वेन दे अपियर सो दिस विल बी इंडिकेटिंग टूवर्ड्स द सीलियक डिजीज एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज द पीडियाटिक सीलियक डिजीज एज इट्स प्रेजेंट एज इट प्रेजेंट एट द एज ऑफ सिक्स टू ट्वेंटी फोर मंथ्स वेन यू स्टार्ट गिविंग द ग्लूटिन कंटेनिंग फूड क्लियर सो दिस इज द पीड्रियाटिक सीलियक डिजीज देन वी हैव सर्टन एक्स्ट्रा इंटेस्टिनल सिम्टम्स ऑल्सो दैट इंक्लूड्स द आर्थराइटस क्लियर आर्थराइटस स्टोमेटाइटस मीन्स माउथ अल्सर्स में भी प्रेजेंट क्लियर एनेमिया इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द एक्स्ट्रा इंटेस्टिनल फीचर सो दिस इज योर एक्स्ट्रा इंटेस्टिनल फीचर नाउ आफ्टर दिस वी हैव द टेस्ट टेस्ट फॉर द सीलियर डिजीज क्लियर साइलेंट लेटेंट पीडियाटिक सीलियर डिजीज वी हैव स्टडीड नाउ वी हैव द टेस्ट ऑफ द सीलियर डिजीज वॉट आर द टेस्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टेस्ट इज द आई जीज आई जी ए अगेंस्ट टिश्यू ट्रांसग्लोटामिनेस दिस इज द मोस्ट सेंसिटिव टेस्ट वेरी सेंसिटिव टेस्ट दैट इज द आई जी ए अगेंस्ट द टिश्यू ट्रांसग्लोटामिनेस then we can also find the iga against the endomycium then in those patients in which the iga deficiency is present so we have the igg against the tissue transglutaminase so these are the test uh, for the celiac disease in which there is iga against the tissue transglutaminase most sensitive test IgG against endomycium and IgG against the tissue transglutaminase in those patient where IgA deficiency is present clear now uh, we also have that those individuals that are present with the celiac disease they also have the increased risk of getting the carcinoma and most important carcinoma is the enteropathy associated T cell uh, lymphoma this is one of the most common carcinoma that is uh, present in the patient of the celiac disease because they are more prone to develop the carcinoma and one of the most common is the enteropathy associated t cell lymphoma clear now after this that the last thing that is the treatment of this disease basically there is no treatment of this disease the treatment you can say will be the gluten free diet means you have to restrict the patient strictly from the gluten that you don't have to give the gluten and this condition can be if it is diagnosed so with the gluten free diet it can be recovered in 6 to 12 months you can say patient can be recovered but the diagnosis is very important if it is diagnosed early then it can be also treated early so this is all about your celiac disease we have studied the pathology we have studied the histopathology the serology the clinical features the pediatric celiac disease silent celiac disease the latent celiac disease then i told you about the test for the celiac disease then the treatment of the celiac disease so if you have any query any confusion you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah hafiz